Steve Me, the bullseye guy, going to answer three questions. Question one, what should consumers think about FTX? For consumers to think about FTX, it's a little bit interesting because it's I, I worry about things like when Shaquille O'Neal goes out and says, oh, I don't know anything about crypto. Comparing the failure of FTX to crypto and thinking it's bad about crypto is like comparing the stock market to what Bernie Madoff did. And what do I mean by that? The failure of FTX has nothing to do with crypto or the blockchain market, in my opinion. It was pure fraud. You put money on deposit, that money was taken out of FTX, stuck into Alameda Research, and traded off books or offline. Nothing to do with crypto, nothing to do with the market. That was a purely fraudulent move of taking money out of deposits and moving it out. Question two, how does that bode for the crypto market? Well, in, in my opinion, crypto was always looked at or it should have been looked at as glorified penny stocks. Highly risky, highly speculative. Most people, if they come to me say, oh, should I invest in Bitcoin or should I invest in crypto? My answer is always the same. It depends. It depends on your risk profile. If you're low risk, long-term investor like New York Stock Exchange, maybe Bitcoin's an investment for you long-term. If you're speculative, high risk, willing to lose it all for a 10X return like a penny stock, then crypto is a lot more like a penny stock than it is a traditional stock. So I think when you look at investing, it's not is crypto good or bad, it's what's your risk profile and what type of project or program are you looking into? What do I think the future of crypto is? In my opinion, there should be a burgeoning crypto 2.0. So whether I coin that first or not, I'm not sure, but crypto 2.0 in my opinion, will be the next level of digital asset offerings. What we're calling GAO, global asset offerings or digital asset offerings. Using a digital asset to raise capital is more efficient and better than a traditional stock offering. Doing an, an OTC, an over-the-counter offering, a direct public offering on the over-the-counter, or even a NASDAQ direct listing has a lot of limitations. There are some advantages to doing a digital asset offering. It's more transparent, easier to audit. The smart contracts can guarantee dividends. So in my opinion, the future of crypto will kind of move, I hope, into what I call crypto 2.0. These will be bigger projects, more stable companies, things that are looking at like a, a gold mine or a digital asset that's going to be used around a real estate project or an existing company looking to raise capital and provide a dividend and using digital assets backed by real world projects. These won't be the speculative startup paper napkin, almost like the early days of the internet where you could raise money on an idea. That's what digital assets were early on in crypto version 1.0. Crypto 2.0, I believe, will be more legitimate projects, existing companies using digital assets and digital infrastructure to raise capital in a more efficient manner.